experience pure Italian goodness, the real test of Italy. Italian lifestyle, Italian design, Italian culture in London. This is the Italian Factor, and I am Gabriella, your host, joining you in this journey of Made in Italy. Italian style. Quite fashionable. Very chic. Buongiorno. Italian people as being quite friendly, quite outgoing. They have a slower pace of life. Grazie, tutto bene. It is an amazing country. I think Italian food is really uh, uh, easy on the palate. Italians are definitely beautiful. Oh, for sure. Prosciutto. How nice it sounds in Italian. Prosciutto. Today we will be talking about prosciutto, ham in English. And to do so, I have invited Helen Best Shaw. She is a food blogger and a recipe writer. Pleasure to have you here. Hi, well, Evan. thanks for having me. So, you have a blog with a very particular title, fastfreeflavors.com. What it is about? It's all about easy recipes that you'll make again. I think to eat well is to live well, and I think that's something we can sometimes lose sight of here in the UK. Today, you know, we are talking about prosciutto crudo. Do you like it? I love it, yes. Absolutely love prosciutto. Prosciutto. I love prosciutto. In fact, I've painted a prosciutto sandwich called the Ive Ham. Okay? Here comes the complicated part. So, watch carefully. You take out the cheese and the onion and the salad and the tomatoes and then finally the bread and the oil. And what you're left with is the meat, and the recipe is complete. Mmm. <laughs> well, I've not convinced you, have I? Well, here are some fun facts about pork in general. The pig is a sign in the Chinese zodiac, and although that may sound bad, people born in the year of the pig are gallant, scrupulous, trustworthy, and artistic. Mmm. Isn't that lovely? There are lots of cold cuts, especially Italian cold cuts. They are masters at making them. An Italian sausage has won no less than 41 European awards. To name a few, we have Soprasata di Calabria, Capocola di Calabria, Pancetta Piancentina, Coppa Piancentina, Salami Brianza, Calatello di Zebello, and prosciutto di San Daniele. I tell you, just, just reading them out is making me hungry. The word prosciutto comes from the Latin pro, which means before, and exuctus, which means dried. So, pre-dried. See, now you can talk to your other half at home in Latin. Mildred, carpe diem. Two of the main prosciutto crudo lovers are Julius Caesar and Christopher Columbus. You know why? because salty food keeps better and for longer. So it worked well for Caesar while he was at war and for Christopher Columbus on his voyage to America. I'm just telling you this in case you feel like waging a war on someone or discovering a new continent. This stuff comes in handy. A lot of different types of ham exist in the world. For example, in Europe, we have the French jambon, the Spanish jamon and the Italian prosciutto. What is the main difference between them? I think that people have been making ham as long as the pig has been domesticated for. There are so many different breeds of pig, they live in different places, they're fed different foods, the ham's cured in different environments. Of course, they're all going to be very different. And if you have to describe the Italian prosciutto crudo to someone who has never tasted it before, what would you say? Magical. <laughs> it's sweet, it's meaty, there's a hint of umami, it's soft, it's just magical. You have to experience it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Unescapable Quiz, hosted by me, Ivan Berry, where we talk to some unlucky Londoners about prosciutto, cold cuts, and sandwiches. 
Are you ready? Let's go. In Italy, there is a tradition to name cold cuts after their original creators. True. True, why not? False. Well, I don't know. Uh, true. <laughs> true. 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 False. Well, at least it's not a tradition. But there are a lot of cities named after cold cuts, like the Milano salami, the Napoli salami, and the Bologna, which is a pretty fat cut of meat. And it's no coincidence that the Italian called the city of Bologna itself la grassa, which in English means the fat. Sandwiches are the most popular food in America. That's true, uh, just like here. True. True. Mm. False. Sandwiches, cheese sandwiches, tuna sandwiches, it's a big variety. False. True. False. True. True. The US sandwich market is worth $121 billion and they make them with everything. Cheese, cold cuts, meat, fish, even fruit. Fruit. And people say the British are bad. Prosciutto was invented around the 6th and 5th century BC. Well, I think so. It's true. Because, uh, false. True. You've given the date, so I'm sure. <laughs> true. False. False. False, false, false. <laughs> false. No, false. False. Actually, not true. True. Prosciutto was probably invented by the Etruscans in the 6th and 5th century BC, and it was even loved by the Romans, who named a street after it. Panis Sperna. Panis meaning bread, perna meaning pig's leg. It's like us Londoners naming a street after fish and chips. <laughs> fish and chip street. I like that. We Italians love prosciutto crudo also because it is so easy and versatile. It's great on its own, but also easy to pair with other foods. What pairings would you suggest with fruit and cheese? I think firstly, keep it simple. You want a good glass of wine or perhaps a glass of Prosecco. It helps it go down better. Maybe a few slivers of grano, maybe a few slivers of padano, a, a fresh ricotta or some marinated mushrooms. And among the thousands of recipe possibilities to put together with prosciutto crudo di San Daniele, which one would you suggest? I think keep it simple. Of course, it's excellent enjoyed by itself, but how about putting it with some English muffins, some hollandaise in a twist on eggs benedict? Or maybe just serve a few slices on top of a bowl of panzanella. Experts say the important thing is to not make the prosciutto recipe too messy and especially to not cook it. Could you explain why? Absolutely never cook your prosciutto. It will ruin the taste, it will ruin the flavour. Andrea. Hi, Ivan. Hey, how are you how doing, are you? man? You all very right? Good, very good, you thanks. Good? Very good. Uh, so you are the, uh, the chef here at Gotto, and we're going to be cooking something pretty special today, is that right? Yes, we're going to cook uh, San Daniel ham with fixed start and goat cheese, truffle goat cheese. That sounds pretty great. We start with uh, some lovely fix from Italy. Oh, so we just slice in uh, three. Uh, right. In the meantime, I'm rolling the puff pastry okay. for the tart. So the tart is really done. Okay. And uh, if you wanna help me, yeah, you can uh, just like the fix. And, and you find that the, uh, the, the 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 figs, especially, they they complement the prosciutto. Uh, yes, I think for autumn, like we are at the moment, yeah, the fix is one of the main ingredients to combine with the San Daniele. I'm gonna start with the goat cheese. You can start to sprinkle some thyme. Okay. Thyme leaves, this uh, fresh lemon thyme. So we just sprinkle some uh, leaves on top. So we're using salt to give us a little bit of saltiness. We use uh, um, honey as well to give it the sweetness. So honey, fix, uh, San Daniele, goat cheese. It's going really perfect together. For the last bit, we just... some egg on the corner. Now we're going to bake the tart for 15 minutes in the oven, okay. 180 degrees, and after we serve it lovely San Daniele. Brilliant, okay. 
Oh, that smells good. Oh, that smells really good. Wow. Okay. Look at that. Yeah, we're gonna slice it for you. And then now we're gonna slice some lovely prosciutto di San Daniele. Okay, here we go. Yeah, that's good. That's really good, right? Yeah, thank you. Well, listen, thank you so much for, uh, for, for teaching me. Experience pure Italian goodness. The real test of Italy. Experience pure Italian goodness, the real test of Italy. Prosciutto di San Daniel. How can I describe prosciutto? It's quite salty. I think it's like really warm. Italian prosciutto is like a piece of paper. Delicious. It's sweet, thin. The flavors are really nice. One of the best things you can eat. La selezione e la rifinatura sono la prima parte della lavorazione del prosciutto di San Daniele in cui l'operatore seleziona le cosce per classi di peso e per caratteristiche fisiche e successivamente con un apposito coltello rifila le cosce per dargli la forma caratteristica e per consentire soprattutto di aprire la parte anteriore della coscia e rendere una migliore penetrazione del sale e successivamente una migliore stagionatura. Il prosciutto viene completamente ricoperto dal sale e resterà sotto sale per circa 14 giorni. Mentre avviene la fase di salagione il prosciutto viene pressato, cioè riceve una pressione sulla coscia, diciamo in maniera verticale, che gli consente di compattare le carni e soprattutto di conferirgli la posizione tradizionale a chitarra che poi possiederà alla fine della lavorazione. Il riposo dura circa 120 giorni e è un periodo nel quale il prosciutto viene posto in maniera verticale sulle apposite spalliere e rimane in celle appositamente climatizzate con una temperatura molto bassa, siamo poco sopra gli 0 gradi e un'alta umidità. Al termine della fase di riposo i prosciutti vengono lavati e spazzolati. L'acqua utilizzata in questo lavaggio, intorno ai 40 gradi centigradi, serve per rivitalizzare la coscia facendola iniziare il periodo di fermentazione. Quando quindi la fermentazione è ripartita inizia la lunga fase di stagionatura che dura circa 7-8 mesi. La caratteristica di San Daniele è che trovandosi al centro del Friuli, equidistante tra mare e le Alpi, è percorsa da serie correnti che vanno da nord a sud e che facilitano l'asciugatura la dei prosciutti. Tutti i prosciutti fici di San Daniele sono posizionati in maniera perpendicolare rispetto al flusso dell'aria, proprio per permettere con le finestre aperte di asciugare i prosciutti e stagionarli. Al termine della stagionatura, prima che i prosciutti vengano spediti, si esegue la stucatura, che è la copertura della parte magra della coscia con un'apposita sugna fatta da grasso di maiale, sale e pepe, che serve come una crema idratante per proteggere la parte esposta del prosciutto, mantenerla morbida e evitare un eccessivo contatto con l'aria. La puntatura è un test tecnico che valuta le caratteristiche organolettiche del prosciutto al termine della stagionatura e con questa puntatura si fa una sorta di assaggio olfattivo per verificare che non ci siano difetti sulla coscia e che sia perfettamente riuscita. Il termine della lavorazione del prosciutto di San Daniele è il marchio che il consorzio appone, che è il marchio di qualità e il marchio di certificazione del prosciutto, che dichiara che è un prosciutto di San Daniele autentico, ma non solo, ma è un prosciutto di San Daniele che ha superato tutti i controlli precedenti e può essere certificato come tale. What is the relationship between the British and prosciutto crudo? I think the British like the prosciutto crudo. We like cured meats. I think people will buy some prosciutto, but they'll mix it with other meats, maybe some salami with it as well. What is the difference, culturally speaking, and also looking at the consumption, between the prosciutto you buy sliced by the butcher and the one you find in packets? I think most people in the UK will buy the prosciutto ready sliced in the packages from the supermarket. Sometimes you can go to a restaurant and have it freshly sliced. 
I love the freshly sliced prosciutto. I think what's very, what is very interesting is the person who does the slicing can change how it tastes. It depends where it comes from the leg. What do Londoners or the British in general look for when they buy prosciutto di San Daniele? I think what Londoners and the Brits should look for when they're buying the prosciutto, of course, is the PDO mark to show that it's genuine prosciutto from San Daniele. Peter, thank you so much for meeting with me. Um, first up, tell us exactly what you do, what your position is. Uh, so I'm, I'm the owner of the restaurant here. Uh, this is Gotto Trattoria in, in Hackney. And so you must uh, deal with a lot of things like prosciutto. Yeah, so we, we, um, we're an Italian restaurant, we use a lot of quality Italian ingredients um, and prosciutto di San Daniele is, uh, is one of the best ingredients that, that we use. And why is it always the hind leg of the pig? Um, so the, the whole leg, um, in terms of um, an aging process, is, is perfect um, given the weight of the leg, um, the way that the muscle um, is made. And in terms of the fat content, you get a really, really good result okay. from the aging process. Okay. Um, Prosciutto di San Daniele um, always has the, the trotter on. Yes. It, yeah. Like you've always got, I think you've got a couple in the background when you yeah. know they keep those attached. Uh, is there a specific reason for that? Well, partly it's tradition having the trotter, that's the kind of um, the mark of, of San Daniele. Um, but there's a practical reason as well. Um, having the whole leg and then having the trotter attached helps. Um, getting rid of some of the humidity as, as the aging process. Like you said, because they, 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 they last so long, would you say that the taste changes over time? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. In, in aged prosciutto you'll find that um, the flavour is a little bit more intense um, okay. and the meat's a little drier. So like, like wine? Absolutely, yeah. Wine's probably a good example. If you, you know, young prosciutto, the meat will be a little bit juicier, a bit more succulent, mm -hmm. but the aged prosciutto will have that greater intensity of flavour and that slightly drier meat as well. Yeah, can I suck in? Can I, absolutely, oh, yeah. yeah is it, no, is there, there's no, oh, that's a lovely big bit. Just, just go, go for it, yeah, yeah, or tear it apart. If you know, no, yeah. I'll do the whole thing at once. <laughs> <laughs> tear it apart. <laughs> <laughs> so you're looking with San Daniele, you're looking for the saltiness, the sweetness mm. at the same time, you'll notice. Um, it's a good kind of fat content. Fat brings flavor as well. Um, mm. And just, just enjoy it. And what is the Italian factor of prosciutto di San Daniele? Tradition, origin and authenticity. Prosciutto di San Daniele is only produced in certain areas which you have visited. What kind of places are they? How are they? San Daniele is a beautiful old town. It sits on the foothills of the mountains, halfway between the mountains and the sea, with winding streets, cobbled streets. It's full of treasures. There are fresco churches. There's one of the oldest lending libraries in the world, full of old ancient books. And then out, just outside the town are the prosciutto factories, where the ham is made and where it hangs to mature. La storia del prosciutto di San Daniele è millenaria, risale ai tempi romani. Il Friuli era una terra di accampamenti romani e si ha testimonianza di norcini che lavoravano le cosce e le salavano per le legioni che accampavano qua. Il Consorzio del Prosciutto di San Daniele è il consorzio dei salumi più vecchio in Italia, più di 50 anni di storia. Nasce dall'idea di fare squadra per tutelare il marchio, regolamentare tutti i passaggi produttivi per conferire al prodotto caratteristiche uniformi e soprattutto per raggiungere una base qualitativa omogenea e riconoscibile sul mercato. Per riconoscere un vero prosciutto di San Daniele si devono considerare tre cose. La prima, il marchio, lo trovate sulla cotenna. e La seconda è che se è intero colosso deve avere lo zampino, quindi rappresenta l'arto intero del maiale. Il terzo dobbiamo essere intenditori e di solito quello più buono è quello che assaggiamo ed è quello di San Daniele. Il prosciutto di San Daniele è una denominazione di origine protetta tutelata dall'Unione Europea fin dal 1992. Quindi quando un prosciutto riceve il marchio top prosciutto di San Daniele, assicura al consumatore le caratteristiche di produzione e la qualità che avrà il prodotto. Le caratteristiche particolari della nostra città fanno sì che ci sia un microclima unico e ripetibile che fa sì che si possa trasformare il prosciutto qua e non altrove. Per fare il prosciutto di San Daniele non si usano ingredienti o conservanti, si usa solo la carne di suino italiano e il sale marino, nient'altro. Il prosciutto di San Daniele ha il suo Italian Factor perché rappresenta anche lui uno stile di vita, la tradizione, la qualità, il cibo che è antico e rimane ancora in uso nei tempi moderni perché non solo è buono, è fatto bene, ma soprattutto fa bene. We are coming to now to the end of our talk, but before we say goodbye, we would like to carry out a little test to see 
How Italian <laughs> our guests are. First of all, do you feel Italian? I like Italian food. I'm wearing an Italian scarf and I go skiing in Italy. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're ready, we begin. And you have repeat this tongue twister after me. It's very difficult, <laughs> also for Italians, but I will go very slowly. Sul tagliere. Sul tagliere. Sul tagliere. Taglia l'aglio. Taglia l'aglio. Non tagliare. Non tagliare. La tovaglia. La tovaglia. La tovaglia. La tovaglia. Non è aglio. Non è aglio. E tagliarla. E taglia aglio. <laughs> è un grave sbaglio. È un grave sbaglio. <laughs> This oh, one so was difficult. really, really bad. Too difficult for us Italians too. Which in English means cut garlic on the cutting board. Don't cut the tablecloth. The tablecloth isn't garlic and cutting, it's a great mistake. <laughs> no, nonsense at all. Nonsense. So thank you, Ellen. And one last thing. Generally speaking, what do you think the Italian factory is in general? I think quality hand in hand with simplicity. Thank you so much. And uh, as for us, there is still lots to discover about the best of Italian style in London. And remember, if you don't know what makes something special, it's the Italian factor. See you soon. Ciao. Sol tariere, taglio l'aglio, non tagliare la tovaglio. La tovaglio no è aglio, e o tagliare è un grave sbaglio. Now it's your turn. Sul tagliere tagla li aglio. Non tagliare la tavaglia. Sul tagliere taglia la tagliere. Sul tagliere taglia l'aglio. Non tagliere la tavaglia. Non tagliere la tavaglia. <laughs> la tavaglia non è non è aglio. La tavaglia non è la aglio. La tovaglia non è non è l'aglio. El tagliere è un grave. Tagliarla è un grave spaglio. Experience pure Italian goodness. The real test of Italy.